In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, a system of two equations in two unknowns, differential equation, that is linear with a non-homogeneous term that is constant. So the equation I'm looking at here is x prime equal ax plus b. And I would like to consider the case where a is a non-invertible matrix. In the previous video, I went through a case where a was invertible. And now we have a slightly more complicated case here, um, and that is a non-invertible matrix. So we can see that this matrix is not invertible quickly in two ways. One, because it's uh, two by two, um, it's easy to see that the columns are linearly dependent vectors. One is just a multiple of the other. The other thing we can see quickly is that the determinant for this is four minus four is zero. So those are all equivalent ways of determining whether a matrix is invertible or not. Okay, so what that means that it's not invertible when we're looking for a particular solution using the method of undetermined coefficients, our guess is going to determine is going to be determined by um, whether the homogeneous term, the non-homogeneous term, uh, is well either solves the homogeneous equation or is even too similar to the homogeneous equation. So let's just start by finding the eigenvalues of this matrix. So we have lambda squared minus the trace is 5 lambda plus the determinant as we said was 0. So now you can see that one of the eigenvalues is going to be 0 and the other one is going to be 5. So the lambda equal 5 that one's not going to be a problem but because lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue that means one of our solutions will be e to the 0 times t multiplied by v, where v is an eigenvector, meaning a v equal 0 times v. Okay, so this tells us that a constant vector might cause trouble if we choose that as our xp. Uh, and so um, what we're going to do then is we're going to choose xp of t to be equal to a constant vector u and see what happens. Well, first we get x prime is going to be equal to 0 because this is a constant vector. And now that's going to be equal to a, the right-hand side of the equation, a times u plus b. And a is 1, 2, 2, 4 times u plus 2, 3. Now I'm going to rewrite this as I did in the first video. I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly more um, instructive way, which is to write it as a vector 1, 2, the first column of A, multiplied by the first component of u plus the vector 2, 4, multiplied by the second component of u. And that is going to have to be equal to, I'm going to bring this 2, 3 over to the other side, and I get minus 2, minus 2, minus 3 on that side. Okay, so now the question is, can we find u1 and u2 to add up the vector 1, 2, and 2, 4 to get minus 2, 3? Now these vectors, because the matrix is not invertible, these vectors are um, not independent. Right? One is a multiple of the other. And you'll notice that the second component in both is twice the first. So no matter what u1 and u2 values we use, we will always end up with a vector that has second component twice the first. This is not a vector of that form. So there is no way that we're going to be able to solve this. And you can do a quick row reduction, 1, 2, 2, 4, minus 2, minus 3, and you'll see that you get twice the first row subtracted from the second gives me a row of zeros on the left side here, 0, 0, and then minus 3 minus twice that one is plus 4 is 1, and I have a minus 2 there. So you can see that there is no solution, and this guess up here was the problem. It's too similar to the, to the homogeneous uh, solution, and that's why we were unable to use a linear combination of the columns to 
solve this problem. Now, had we used a vector here that had that very special form where the second component was twice the first, we'd be able to solve this. And that would be because the vector b is in the column, what we call the column space, the space spanned by the vectors in the columns of a. But we did not have such a special vector, so we have to find a new approach. So the new guess that we're going to try, and this is motivated by what we did in second order equations is we're just going to multiply u by t. And now let's take the derivative of that one. So now when I take the derivative, the derivative of u times t is going to be the vector u. Now we're going to set that equal to the right hand side. So I get a times u times t plus b. Now this t is just a scalar. So I can factor it out in front. So I have an equation u equal t times au plus b. And you'll notice I have this t, and I want this equation to be true for all t. So what that means is that it has to be equal for t equals 0 or t equal anything else. So when t is equal to 0, I get u equal b. And once I know that u equal b, I can just cancel those, and then I need to have that au is equal to 0. So We've already got u from this expression. We know that u has to be 2, 3. But u also has to solve the equation au equals 0. And that is not going to work in this case because a times b is not equal to 0. Let's just see what that multiplication gives us. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 is 2 plus 6 is 8. And I don't even have to calculate the second entry. I know that 8 is not 0. So this actually did not work. And the reason for that is we just don't have enough flexibility to solve both of the equations, the equations that emerged. And that's because we didn't have enough flexibility in our guess. So what we actually have to do, this is going to work finally. xp of t, I'm going to guess that it's equal to u times t plus some vector w. And now when I take xp prime, I get u, and the constant w disappears, but it appears on the right-hand side where I have a times ut plus w plus b. Now I can write down uh, so let's see, uh, we have two equations again. We have one formed from the constants in this, which is going to include the u and the a times w and the b, and another one, another equation for all the t terms. And that's just one. So I have that a u has to be equal to zero, and I also have that u has to be equal to a w plus b. So I can solve this equation for u because there's no w in there, and then I can plug my answer for u in here to find w. So uh, what are the solutions to a u equals zero? Well, you can go through that carefully on your own, but I can just look at this matrix and see that any multiple of the vector 2 minus 1 is going to work. So I'm going to write down that u is equal to s times 2 minus 1. And you can practice your row reduction and get that answer, or you can just look to see that it works and be happy with that. Okay, so now we're going to put that u into this equation, and we get um, s times 2 minus 1 is equal to and I'm going to write this just because I'm running out of space. Actually, let's move this around a little bit to make more space. So I'm going to write this as s times 2 minus 1 is equal to, and now I'm going to write this a times w in this format here as vectors. So I'm going to write it as 1, 2, w1 plus 2, 4 times w2 plus 2, 3. 
Okay, so now we're asking the question, can I find S, W1, and W2 that make the vector 2, 3? Well, let me rearrange that so we can write it as S times 2 minus 1 plus, well, let's minus W1 times 1, 2 minus W2 times 2, 4 equal 2, 3. Now before we had an equation just like this, except I had the minus sign on the other side, and I didn't have this part here, and we had the problem that these two vectors were dependent and were not enough to form a linear combination that gave me whatever b value, b vector I had on the right hand side. But now we've got an extra vector in there. This vector came from the au equals zero problem. So we call that a vector in the null space. So this is a vector that spans the null space. And these two are both dependent on each other, but together, or either one on its own, spans what we call the range of the matrix A. So this is part of the column space. And as long as this vector u is independent of the columns of A, we'll be able to solve this problem. And here the vector 2 minus 1 and 1, 2 are definitely independent. I can actually just set w2 equal to 0 because it being in there does not add anything to the problem. And so another way of thinking about that is I can rewrite this as 2 times w2 and have this as 1, 2 and fuse these two vectors together into a single expression. But I can just really cross it out and not worry about it because it's dependent on this vector here. And now I'm trying to find an S and a W that make 2, 3. So I'll let you go through the algebra to calculate S and W1, but you'll find that S is 1 fifth and W1 is minus 8 fifths. And we can now use those to assemble the solution uh, XP of T which is going to be u, that's 1 fifth times the vector 2, 1 multiplied by t, plus w, the vector minus 8 fifths, 0.